This is episode 36F of the Future Intelligent Leadership Podcast. This is part of a special series of podcasts featuring chapter authors from the book Leadership for the Future. In this second interview, I'm joined by Roger Spitz and Rowley McKinnon. Based in San Francisco, Roger Spitz is the president of Technistential Foresight Strategy and founding chairman of the Disruptive Futures Institute. A member of the Association of Professional Futurists, he sits on a number of advisory boards of companies, venture capital funds, and academic institutions worldwide. Technicentials' renowned board governance and investor practice works with leaders and their organizations globally to capitalize on disruption as a springboard to drive value. An advisor, speaker, and author on artificial intelligence, Roger has invested in a number of AI startups. Roger has two decades leading investment banking businesses, advising CEOs, founders, boards, and shareholders of companies globally on strategic M&A transactions and has advised on deals with overall value of $25 billion. Joining Roger is Rowley Nakenen. Based in Finland, Rowley has a background in humanities and philosophy. After a master's in European philosophy, he attended graduate studies focusing on Kant's critique of pure reason. He has a keen interest in a process philosophy approach, ontology, as well as philosophy of science. Rowley is currently conducting research at the Disruptive Futures Institute, where the focus is on the philosophical questions involved in complexity, artificial intelligence, and decision making. The aim is to present views on the nature of physicalist scientific speculation in such a way as to equip audiences with the ability to better appraise both capabilities and limitations of scientific solutions and the technological applications derived from them. Let's listen to the interview. So welcome, Rowley and Roger. I really appreciate you joining me today. We're talking about your chapter in the new book, uh, Leadership for the Future. And so I want to know, uh, you know, what's the title of your chapter? And, And just give us a little summary of it. So I don't know who wants to start, but Go ahead. Great. Well, I'm happy to kick off then, but uh, fantastic to be with you, um, <clears throat> Tyler, and so good uh, to, to have Rowley and I kind of join um, for our chapter. So ours is called An Existential Framework for the Future of Decision-Making in Leadership. Mm. And thanks a lot to Rowley because he's really the philosopher in the room, but I'll let him kind of take the relay in a second. Um, we've tried to develop uh, an existential framework for decision-making and complexity, complex adaptive systems. Mm. So what we've done is we, we consider obviously like not alone in that, but that the world is, uh, is very complex and increasingly so. And so we draw parallels with existentialism where you have a problematic and you really need to sort of emerge through choices and decisions um, despite the unknown and uncertainty. So <clears throat> for us, when we look at the world and we think about leadership, it's really developing that emergent behavior, including for decision making. Mm-hmm. So that's really the, the kind of uh, 30 seconds um, on the, the premise. Great. Well, you want to is kind of like maybe something like uh, so the summary like or the premise is that um, we got to talking with um, Roger originally um, over LinkedIn as it happened and uh, we kind of got into this kind of like um, um, ethical questions quite quickly onto like what's happening with AI and mm. uh, from there on it kind of started building and then we sort of like yeah we realized that we co- we have common interests and. Uh, one was the way uh, we navigate uh, this, this current situation, which is quite interesting in terms of artificial intelligence coming onto the scene. Um, I think, um, in, my, in my view, it's a, it's a pretty historical moment in the history of humanity, almost, because we put ourselves for the first time on an artifact that uh, is actually kind of goes beyond what you could call a paradigm of a tool where you can, the tool is something passive, you take it up and you can sort of put it away. Whereas with artificial intelligence, we've got something which is just like switched on all the time and mm. it's kind of working actively despite us. So uh, that's the kind of paradigm that we find ourselves today. Mm-hmm. And with then, uh, with all the talk about complexity and, and you know, a lot of um, ha- uh, events in the world, say COVID for example, as a good example, um, 
there's, there's, there's certain seems to um, be more of, of these complex situations and environments uh, popping up. And, uh, and that means that leadership in all sorts of um, environments, be that public organizations or private companies, um, have got to navigate something which is which has become much more of an, um, di a different beast from mm. a, a world where we had still very linear prediction and you could sort mm. of re rely on uh, tomorrow being much the same as it was today, okay? And so, um, so we, together with this, there's a lot of uh, data economy. So people are starting, you know, uh, a tech, there's a techno-scientific uh, movement, which is, you know, like advocating the gathering of a lot of data. And with that data, there's a name to predict the future. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then together with that, we've got the artificial uh, learning machine <laughs> coming in. And then, you know, we're putting in using mathematical models and feeding them with data to be able to predict but it's not as straightforward as as uh, many many sort of seem to claim uh, it to be, and there's a lot of problematics in mm. in, in with uh, predicting in complex environments because complexity yeah. uh, is much defined by nonlinear dynamics, where the right. superposition principle of linear dynamics uh, is lost, and that's where problems start arising. Mm. So at the moment we're in an interesting paradigm where it's a question of do we you know like we want to sort of like have discussion of this do people are we prepared for this do we do we have sufficient understanding mm. of this issue whilst these systems are being given a lot of power already mm. so that's the sort of what we're working with <laughs> so yes yeah, so, i mean a lot of stuff i i be interesting just to hear too uh so i'm definitely in a similar space working look on the looking at the brain how it works uh in complex uncertain exponentially changing environments and um like you're saying it's um you know, the world, the world is, the world seems to be getting more complex. Like one question would be, do you see that complexity is going to become more of a norm uh, in the future? And then also uh, like you're saying too, is, uh, is the other part of it where we're using um, predictive data, but that's from the past, right. To predict uh, the future, which is, but the future that's complex and that could be a recipe for disaster, right. In some level too. Um, Cause you know, you, you know, in complexity, you can't rely on past information. That's the, that's the whole point of it, right? It doesn't work. It doesn't. It doesn't have the same value anymore. So, if you could speak to that, it'd be interesting to hear your perspectives on those two points. Two points. Um, well, um, <laughs> it's well. So, I'll probably just like maybe these aren't points so much, yeah. rather than just kind of like issues that. Are, um, of interest so mm -hmm. um, you know there's uh, work on this already but it's just not very known and it's kind of like quite niche it's academic but uh, something like, uh, called uh, model faithfulness uh, which comes from which is a problematic uh, uh, which rises from the nonlinear and, and nonlinearity and the mm. something called the sensitive conditions on initial condition uh, sensitive dependence on initial con conditions sorry mm where um, to be able to sort of like put the, the a nonlinear model into work, the assumptions uh, required, like, required to make the model uh, predict for anything but a few days or whatever, mm. uh, it, it really doesn't have um, the, you know, the, system, the mathematics don't work, the system breaks down. So model faithfulness is something which then becomes a real question it means it's basically what model faithfulness means is, is that um what is the degree to which your computer simulation is actually simulating something in the real world mm. or whether it's just mimicking so the difference would be like if it's just mimicking you've just got like almost like by analogy like a computer game where your avatar is mimicking human movement but it's not actually simulating anything in the real world mm. So that's where, uh, that's one sort of like thing that we're kind of like looking into. Uh, doesn't answer your question at all. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting, yeah. Curious, Roger, do you have any thoughts on that or? Yeah, I mean, the, it's a very nuanced and, and difficult question. So there are many different layers to it. But one way we look at it is really just also um, 
if you take a step back and think, hey, what's complicated versus complex? And most of your mm-hmm. listeners and yourself, yeah. of course, you're intimately aware of, of that. But just to take a step back, complicated is you understand cause and effect. There's a range of right answers. You can rely on experts. Um, you can understand cause and effect ex ante, so beforehand mm-hmm. and, and everything we, we know. And, and AI is very good with that because there's causality. So, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's historic data, current data, let's say that for AI in a complicated environment where causality is understood and where there's a range of right answers, AI is relatively versatile in that. Mm. I think the issue, as, as Riley was mentioning earlier, and to your point, you know, we do believe that complexity is, is increasing and, and mm. pretty much a dominant feature. So the world of business or strategy where decision makers rely on predetermined playbooks or, you know, assuming a predictable, linear and controllable world, that world doesn't exist. And therefore, the algorithms that, you know, to Rowley's point, that simulate that world with an understanding that it's controllable, understandable, it's just, it just doesn't exist. And so... Mm. In contrast, in a complex world, what you have, again, as you know, but just to kind of, you know, reframe everything, complex world is we don't necessarily, you know, you don't know cause and effect until ex post, so you can't establish it beforehand. You have to kind of emerge and amplify or dampen behaviors which allow you to reach where you want to get, but you don't, that's not predetermined. There are no right answers. Mm. Um, And so that's really complexity. And so the issue is that AI is not... Well, it's not an issue, but fortunately, maybe AI is not good at complex because there's no, the cause and effect is different. And yet the world is relying on AI to a degree on making decisions and and analyzing things as if it could not only be predictive, but prescriptive Mm. in its algorithms, which is not possible really for complex world or not today. Now, at the same time, machines are learning fast and they're getting more and more clever, but still complex as a specific kind of environment. And the concern is, you know, are humans comfortable? And I don't think they are necessarily. I think we need, you know, coming back to leadership of the future, we need to understand that our environment is complex, that it's a blank page, and therefore we rely on emergent behavior. And that's where we draw the parallels with existentialism, because in a sense, what we're saying, and if you look at, you know, some of the most famous, although a bit cliche, but important quotes of Sartre, who, you know, Mm. standing on the shoulders of the, you know, the Kierkegaards and the Heideggers of the world, Existence precedes the essence is really, you know, man, first of all, exists, he surges in the world, and he defines himself afterwards. And so in Mm -hmm. a sense, the complicated world is a fragile world, to use Nassim Taleb's terminology, where you have this essence precedes the existence. So it's deterministic, it's reductionist, you can predict things, AI is good, and that's fine. But these are self-fulfilling prophecies, really. Mm -hmm. The existence precedes the essence is a good thing. It means that we acknowledge that the world is uncertain. It's not predictable. You actually have agency and choice to define your beingness. It's a contingent world, Hmm. but you do have that reoccurring responsibility to emerge. You need to constantly understand this indeterminacy and this emergence. And so that's where the considerations around both human decision making and our understanding of what is a complex world and how we're evolving to kind of be better at emergent behavior um, and also the constraints of, of AI and the sort of delegated authority we're giving AI more and more for this complex world for which AI is not adapted for. And so really we need to, to understand that um, that emergent behavior that ability for us to develop our capabilities and to emerge through our choices is really defining our, our essence. And, and mm-hmm. in that sense, to close the loop, it's why we consider it to be an existential framework to the future of decision making, because it's a complex world, things are not predetermined, and we have to have that emergent behavior. And that's where AI comes in to, to sort of close the loop. That's great. Well, uh, let's move on to the next question then. Um, you know, this idea of the book title being uh, you know, leadership for the future. Why mm-hmm. do you think that's uh, important right now? And, um, you know, again, how does your work kind of address that? Okay, so um, uh, it kind of links one to, to the um, summary already that, yeah. um, the, the, you know, the reason I see this as very important at the moment is, is the fact of technology, um, you know, developing as, as quickly as it is developing. And for, and, and, you know, the kind of like uh, unprecedented 
um, reach of, of and, and sort of uh, um, consequences of, of using a technology like AI. Um, so I think now is a very sort of like an, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a time where we really, really do want to engage public discussion, engage academic Academics and, and, and also just leadership in, in both public and private organizations to, um, you know, to sort of like come together and um, to have these discussions quite candidly. Mm. So there's, in my mind, there seems to be this, this it's, it's a bit of a, we're in a situation where the most prominent AI research is going on in private companies mm. around the world. Not your Google, your Alibaba, your Amazon, and it's a bit of an like somebody said it quite well like it's a good analogy i think that we should treat ai kind of like nuclear power you know mm. you shouldn't be able to just like that's a national question you know where where you know it's, it's you don't just get to do whatever you want with uh, nuclear, nuclear power plants you know it's, it's something that is very regulated and controlled and so we've got this very sort of like uh, contentious and, and potentially really dangerous technology uh, being developed on, you know, on, in, behind closed doors, basically, mm. uh, much of the time. And, and so that's the kind of like the meta level at where this is important, but also just like, I guess, coming down the level, then you've got, we've probably many of us heard, of us have heard about these kind of like um, mm, algorithms in judicial systems, for example, that they've tried in America and they've gone horribly wrong. They've had you know, big racial bias and so on and so forth. So it's, it's to be, it's, you know, these are messages coming from all over where, you know, we have to sort of like, if you're in a leadership position, you, you have to become aware. You can't, mm. it's a responsibility. You can't any longer just go, well, you know, I'm not, you know, responsible for this technology. I'm just trying to run my company the best I can and I'll take any advantage I can mm. by whatever means necessary. Uh, I think this is something that is it you know behooves everybody to uh, consider if you're in a leadership position. Mm, great, yeah. Roger. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> this is really the you know the crux of it. I think what what Raoul is outlining, and if you if you think about the the framework again of you know the complex world and and going forward, in a way we're giving AI this ability to have a greater role in every step of the decision-making process, including sometimes delegated authority. And there's nothing wrong with that insofar as we understand what's happening and are the right safeguards, but we don't necessarily understand what's happening. And as, as humans, we're kind of investing a huge amount in AI developing these decision-making capabilities and nothing wrong with that. We've, you know, I, I'm in Silicon Valley, I invest in, the, you know, in different startups, et cetera. I have no problem with that. But I do think that we need to understand that as humans, we also need to invest in ourselves and our capability mm. of making better decision-making in complex environments. And that's where I worry that today, probably neither humans nor AI is, is great in making mm. decisions in complex environments. AI is investing a huge amount and the world is relying on AI more and more to try and make decisions in complex environments, which is actually where humans should be better and, and good at. But I'm not sure that the world and the institutions and the leadership teams to our topic are necessarily understanding what it takes to, what are the features of a complex environment? What does it take for decision-making in complex environment? Mm. So for instance, you know, it's not a bullshit bingo Silicon Valley thing that you need to constantly innovate and fail and, and emerge and, and be anti-fragile. That is the environment that every company is in, every leader is in. So what you have is that a lot of the structures of decision-making and leadership teams are basically complicated control structures to control a simplified environment, which is imaginary. Mm. And that's kind of essence preceding the essence. Our thesis of existence precedes the essence is that you need to be anti-fragile. Anti-fragile need is thrives on complexity. Agency emerges through choice. Indeterminacy gives you emergence. The contingency and the uncertainty is a positive thing. Mm. And that basically you're simplifying the control structures to be more responsive to complexity. So it's actually 
In that sense, for us, very important that leadership teams understand those differences, understand the path that AI is on, and understand the path that human decision making needs to be to be anti fragile, mm. to be anticipatory in terms of you know everything you and I live by every day through our foresight activities, Tyler. But understand what it is to be anticipatory, and the agility to have strategic um, emergence in terms of reconciling short term and long term decision making with the present and that our concept of agility is is the agility to kind of emerge in the decision making in an environment which is unknown and so these features which we label as AAA for anticipatory anti fragile and agility mm. is really to our mind the crux the, you know the crux of why leadership has to not only understand the environment we're in, which is complex, mm. understand how technology is involving and its role in the value chain of decision making, but also understand how do we as humans evolve on that path. And I know these are topics that are also very dear to you and your organization, mm. which you spend a lot of time, which is not just a recognition of that environment and having some tactical tools in that, but understanding that it's, it's the, you know, there's more at stake for humanity and leadership teams to be able to develop those capabilities. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, definitely love that. It's like a, you know, this idea of a foresight future, uh, futures and leadership, it's all a very evolutionary process. Um, and we mm -hmm. can't, we can't deny that. And, and with evolution, uh, what emerges is not always be able to be predicted. You know, we don't know what's going to emerge in the process of evolution. Um, so final yeah. question um, is, you know, what is a you know, key takeaway or key point you'd like to leave um, leaders for the future? I'm okay. happy to uh, go, go for yeah. it. Okay. <laughs> um, I think um, I, would, I would probably go with, um, this is a, it's a bit of a cliche. It gets thrown out like in a lot of places all the time. But trust your people. Invest in your people. You mm. really do have, you know, the best computational machine for your complex environment mm. and your staff within your people. Invest in those processes and mm. you know don't underestimate your people. Don't go for like, well, this is complex environment. We need AI. No, you've mm. got AI in your organization. Use your mm -hmm. people. That's great, Roger. Yeah, no, that, uh, that's a phenomenal analogy um, and takeaway, Rowley. Um, and uh, f for me, it's really, and I know, again, a little bit of a, a cliche, and I have to apologize for that, but uh, too many years in, in the Valley. But I really consider disruption to be a constant and I mm -hmm. also to be very positive. I think that basically, and the reason it's positive is for everything we've said, if we didn't have uncertainty and mm. unknowability, basically we would have a deterministic, reductionist, predicted life and no mm. choice. Mm -hmm. And so the contingency allows chance, allows emergence and serendipity. And so we exist as individuals and determine our, what we become and our, our, our beingness through these choices and actions. And that's individual freedom. And that agency emerges through choice. And so we have to keep on choosing. As Rowley says, computers and AI and algorithms are amazing for, for many things. So are humans. And there's certain things where probably there could be more limitations and more dangers for decision makings than humans. And really the concern for, the, for me, the sort of just to wrap up, the takeaway and the concern I have is that there's a taboo or there's a negativity in terms of framing of change and uncertainty and unknowability and disruption. Whereas that is really what allows to Rowley's point, the curiosity, the experimentation, the sort mm -hmm. of understanding, the tinkering, the testing, the failing sometimes. And that that is required because that is what humans are good at. And not only is it what humans are good at, but it's what is required in complex environments because mm -hmm. there are no right answers causality is not established ex ante, et cetera, et cetera. And so putting all that together means embrace the unknowability and understand that you're probably best suited as humans mm. <laughs> to not only embrace it, but to, to do well in that uncertain environment. And that's thankful that things are not all predetermined and, and written. <laughs> yep. That's great. I love both those last points. It reminds me of the 
there was a great book out there I read years ago about, um, I think it was uh, the medical field and all the serendipity that led to innovations in the medical field that, you know, it's like um, if, if we start to, uh, you know, create systems that don't fail in some sense, yeah. um, we, we probably go, at, we become more and more fragile, right. Over time because of that. Yeah. And so there's like that, that paradox of efficiency that we have in this yeah. world too. So really appreciate uh, Roly and Roger, your time. Do you have another thing you want to say, Roger? No, no, no. I was just, um, everything you'd said in your wrap up just resonated so much with, uh, you know, this sort of belief of hyper efficiency and optimization and all that, which is absolutely the most fragile thing you can use again yeah. to kind of, you know, um, think of, of Taleb's framework. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just, and, you know, we've seen it um, in the past year, but, but even before that, there were glimpses of it and we'll continue to see it a lot. So it's, uh, it's uh, looking forward to continuing the conversation um, yeah. subsequently on all these, uh, these topics with you, Tyler and Raleigh. Yeah. Great. Well, Raleigh and Roger, really appreciate your time today. Thank you for uh, contributing a chapter in the book, Leadership for the Future. If you're listening and you haven't got a copy yet, uh, maybe check it out. So thanks again, and hopefully uh, see you both again soon. Thank you very much. Cool. See you guys. Thanks for yep. organizing.